Howdy folks, Kevin here. Uh, I've got a viewer question that I got via email and I wanted to take a time to do a recording of it because it's kind of a little bit of an advanced topic but can hopefully can give some insight into some of the flexibility that you can have with WebDriver IO and running your tests. So the question is basically, they saw that we can change the browser from the CLI um, and instead they want to change the server or not necessarily change the server but run the same test for multiple servers. So you'd start with server one, two, three, um, all using the same spec.js file. And they want to know if that's possible. Now, at first, uh, I wasn't really sure if it was possible. And to explain that, I'm going to jump into this uh, WebDriver IO configuration file that I have for just my basic WebDriver IO um, setting. And the way that this works is when we run something like npx wdio or um, npm test, which I'll uh, jump into the package JSON. npm test here is just running WebDriver IO, which is what that npx WDIO will do. Um, what this is going to do is WebDriver IO is going to boot up. It's going to check for your configuration file, see what kind of specs you have, see what type of capabilities you have, and get the base URL and run from there. So it's going to create a new browser session for each of your test files um, or each of your capabilities. So if you have three test files and one capability, you're going to have three different browser sessions pop open. And that's where this max instances comes into. If I set this to one, it would limit the number of browsers running at the same time. So you would have three different sessions, but they would be one after another if this was set to one. Um, if you had two test files and two capabilities set, you're going to have a total of four browser sessions be um, in place. Now, um, that doesn't really have a lot to do with this question, but it got me thinking, well, um, even if I passed in, say I had a set of servers, let's make this an array, A, B, and C, there's no real way to say I want to use these three servers. This in the way that I can say I want to use these three capabilities um, because we're a little bit too far inside of WebDriver IO at this point. Um, we really need to step outside of it. So what I'm going to do is think about this for a second, how I want to structure it. Okay, so I'll delete that file and I'm going to come back in to here and we can pass in the server address by changing the base URL to be whatever we want it to be. So actually, let's open up this test and let's see what I called it. So I call it right click. It's actually not right click. Um, it doesn't do any right click, but it's all left over. Anyway, it goes to uh, this API page. I'm gonna change that just to go to the root. And then I'm going to change this to say page title is title. So it'll go to the URL passed in and then get the title of the page and uh, output the title. So if I just go ahead and run this uh, on its own and get rid of that base URL part, see it outputted the WebDriver IO page title. But if I change the base URL, it goes to a different um, website. So one thing we could do is basically run this command multiple times. And you can run multiple commands on the same command line using uh, double ampersand. So now it's going to run twice, one for the default URL and then one for the custom URL. And also ignore this one. It wasn't actually supposed to be there. And uh, because it was there, it's actually creating this issue where um, it went back to the command line even though the test hadn't ended. <laughs> That was just a misfortunate keystroke that I added accidentally in there. It should just be that part. Anyway, it ran twice um, using the different URL. So this is the basic idea that we're going to go with. And what I could do is copy that over, come into my package JSON, and do something like test all, and paste in that command. And now if I run npm run test all, it's going to end up, uh, I need to save the file. You see it's just running that command. And the whole point of doing this is just to make it a little bit uh, shorter that you'll need to type uh, for 
you to run your tests. Now, one last thing we could do is actually, if this gets unwieldy and troublesome to put in our package JSON, we could move it out to its own script. This is gonna be a shell script, and if you're not familiar with shell scripts, they're a way to program a set of instructions to be run in the shell or terminal or command line, whatever you like to call it. Um, there's lots of tutorials out there if you wanna learn more about it. It can be a lot more complex than what we're gonna come up with, um, so much that I don't even um, understand half of it. But the main things I know with this is you need to start your shell script letting the the program know what um, environment to run in. In this case, we're running inside of a shell environment. And then you're gonna put your commands right after that. So back in our script, we're going to come up to the top and paste in that uh, little comment. And then we'll just use our two commands. Um, I broke them up onto several or onto multiple lines and I can come in and add in another line here. So if I wanted to do a shameless plug for my uh, course, I could add that there and then I hit save. And now I'm going to not to save this as a JSON file. That's kind of funny that it thought of that. I'm going to save it as sites.js and I'm going to use JS. And then I'm going to go into my package JSON and I could just say dot slash sites dot. Actually, I need to run sh dot slash sites dot JS. And it shouldn't, <laughs> I called it a JS file. It should not be a JS file. This should be a shell script file. So I'm gonna change this to be .sh. And so you can tell that I haven't um, actually prepared too much for this because I've gotten, well, I've messed up a couple times already. But if I save that, then I will be able to, if I did this correctly, um, I can just run it manually doing sh.sites.sh uh, or I can run that npm run test all and it's going to do the same thing. Let's try that out and make sure I didn't mess up anywhere and I'm not giving you bad advice. Now it looks like it's running, so that's what we want, and let's let this complete. And it's completed, it's run all three tests for us, um, and all through this test all command, or we could have just run it using sh.sites.sh. So that is the um, shell script that we can use to test multiple URLs, if you get advanced uh, into shell scripting, you can actually move these URLs into a array at the top of the file and then reference that through here. I'm not familiar enough with um, shell syntax to understand how to do that. And it's easier just to copy and paste right now because these are really simple commands. Um, if things got more complicated, then we'd probably want to do that. But that's the basics. That's going to wrap it up for how to do this, uh, basically run the same WebDriver I.O. script over multiple URLs um, long term. Um, thanks uh, for the viewer who asked the question. It's a great question and uh, can really show you how you can integrate WebDriver I.O. and how it runs with um, the overall development environment, this, this being a um, terminal shell environment. So let me know if you have any other questions or feedback on this video. Love hearing your feedback and your questions, and have a great week.